No doubt you've heard that we're in the grip of a serious drought, again. But if you're a born and bred city kid like me, it can be hard to understand just how serious that is. Country communities are hurting, bad. Employment in irrigated agriculture is down 25% or more in some places because of the drought. Primary production in some crops is down to levels we haven't seen since the 1950s because of the drought. Our dairy farms are closing in record numbers because of the drought. Once productive farmland is now just a dust bowl because of the drought. And our rivers are running dry because of the... Wait a minute. What's all that water doing there? Our farmers are in a drought all right, but it's not because of a lack of water in the river system. In fact, there's been so much water in the river that it's causing massive erosion, including three meters worth of riverbank in just the last 12 months. There's been deliberate flooding in the Barmer and Gunbower forests, artificially created in a dry year using environmental flows, and our dams have billions of litres of water sitting in them, waiting to be used. In fact, the Commonwealth Government lists the Commonwealth Environmental Water Holdings at 2.7 trillion litres of water rights every year. Now, it's not from a lack of water in the system. It's because our farmers aren't allowed to use the water that we have. You may remember the Millennium Drought. That was a real drought, with 10 brutal years of below average rainfall, with two of those years being in the worst three since the Second World War. That is what a real drought looks like. But since then, the drought broke with the wettest year in recorded history, and half of the years since have seen above average rainfall and half below average, which is about average. Now, 2018 was a dry year, no doubt about it. And in fact, this year's looking pretty dry as well. So we are back in genuine drought conditions. But one dry year, or even two, shouldn't see record job losses and farm closures across the region. I mean, that's the whole point of dams and irrigation. We save the water from the good years so that our farmers can use it in the bad ones. So how have we lost more jobs, more farms, and more production in the years since the Millennium Drought broke than we did during the drought? And how have we run out of water in just the second year of a new drought? What the hell is going on? The Murray-Darling Basin Authority's basin plan is what's going on. The Murray-Darling Basin Authority was created by the Water Act of 2007, and it was set up on a bad foundation to begin with. I created a video in 2011 calling out the problems with the MDBA's basin plan, because even eight years ago, it was already obvious that this was not going to end well. I'm sorry to say that I was right. The MDBA has been given a budget of $13 billion for the purpose of taking water off our farmers and giving it to the environment. They are the reason why more than 70% of the water that flows into the Murray-Darling Basin can't be used for human purposes. They are the reason that while many of our irrigators are getting no water at all, our rivers are full because they're delivering water downstream for environmental purposes. You might think that that's a good thing. Perhaps you think that the environment needs all that water. But I think history tells a different story. I'll give you just one example out of many. This is what the Murray River used to look like during a drought before we built our dams and weirs. And yet this is what it looked like during the height of the Millennium Drought. And this is what it looks like now after a year of very little rain. Yep, the Murray River is better off now because of our dams and weirs. We've built massive lakes that not only help us to manage water and survive droughts, but also provide habitat for fish and birds and all manner of natural life. We've created huge irrigation districts which take the water that used to flow out to sea and instead spreads it across vast areas of Australia, creating beautiful life and habitat and breeding grounds for birds and fish and frogs to name just a few. And thanks to us, the mighty Murray now no longer runs dry, even in the grip of the worst drought on record. And we achieve all of that whilst taking less than 30% of the water that enters the Murray-Darling River system. All of our drinking water, all of our industry, and all of our irrigation across the entire Murray-Darling Basin is done with less than 30% of the water. The other 70%? Well, it carries right on down the river, never to be seen again. But the MDBA's basin plan is founded on the idea that we're taking too much water, that we've done harm to the Murray rather than good. The MDBA says that their plan is looking after farmers and communities as well as the environment, but the reality on the ground is that they're just taking fresh water off farmers and sending it out to sea. The reductions in water access that we've forced on our farmers in the last few years have been devastating. So here we are, with a man-made drought. Our rivers have water, 
Our dams have water, although far less than they should, thanks to the environmental water we've squandered in the last few months. And meanwhile, our farmers are standing on dusty paddocks and watching their livestock die. Imagine being the farmer that owns this property, walking where I am with your life's work crumbling for a lack of water behind you. But just on the edge of your property, there's all this water flowing down the rivers that you can't touch. And to add insult to injury, you're still being charged thousands in water delivery fees on water that isn't being delivered. I know I'd be pretty angry. And it's no surprise that foreclosures, bankruptcies, and even suicides are on the rise out here. I'm reliably informed that in just the federal seat of Farrah, there's been 22 farmers that have committed suicide after they lost their water, lost their hope, and then lost their will to live in just the last 12 months. But for the MDBA, none of that matters. They're just bureaucrats. They just do as they're told and they'll do it even if it kills, well, not them obviously. They're sitting comfortably in an office in Canberra on a six-figure salary and a fat superannuation account. What do they care? But out here, this is life and death. And there's not a lot of life left. The Water Act of 2007, which started this whole mess, was written to keep Greenies happy and to buy votes in marginal seats. It was based on this idea that the Murray River was dying, which wasn't true then and it certainly isn't true now, but it was good for getting votes in the city, where us city folk think that food comes off supermarket shelves and we're more worried about megabits per second than we are about megalitres of water. As we approach the federal election, there's really only one question that matters to me. Who is going to repeal the Water Act of 2007, abolish the MDBA, and replace it with something that gives our farmers and country communities the respect they deserve? Yes, there's a drought, but it's been made 10 times worse for our farmers by the MDBA. Our irrigators should still have water right now. This is, in truth, a man-made drought. But if we made it, then we can end it. And we need to end it. Now.